Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to explain the story of this summer camp I went to uh, this summer way earlier, like two months ago I think. Um, I made a video about it briefly describing it on my second channel but I decided it would be a pretty interesting story to really explain more in depth as a commentary video on my main channel so that's exactly what this is. So I'm just gonna jump right into it. Uh, I have two older brothers. One of them is three years older than me and the other one is I want to say seven years older than me. Basically um, there's a summer camp that you have to be in high school to go to and I had heard about it when I was l really little when my uh, oldest brother went and then when my older brother went I was in like middle school so I knew it was going on and I was really excited to go to it. Um, June of my, uh, I just finished my freshman year, so that was just two months ago. I was getting ready to go. It's it's out about maybe two hours away from my house. It's a really secluded area, like in an opening in a forest. They take away your phones. It's like completely secluded. It's, it's basically really nice. There's like, you know, a lake. There's tons of outdoor activities. And I was really looking forward to it. Now, when we were almost there, we were on like the dirt road going through the forest about to come to the clearing. Uh, the bus stopped, and I was taken off the bus. I, they didn't explain why. They said, hey, Grayson, come on, get off the bus, leave your belongings, and anything you don't want to get wet here. So I didn't like that. I really didn't like that, because it was like 60, 65 degrees outside, and the water was probably a lot colder. And the idea of put anything you don't want to get wet in this bag kind of hinted at what was going to happen. Basically, they they pulled me out, I, I, I took out all my stuff out of my pockets and everything, put them in a bag, and they put me in the back of a golf cart, and they shipped me off, and they kept taking me up and up this hill, until eventually I came up to this clearing, and I saw very clearly what was going on. There was a zip line that went from the top of this hill straight into the lake, and they wanted me to go on it as everyone pulled into the camp. And I was like really nervous because this is my first like impression of the camp ever and they wanted me to like they didn't ask me they, they didn't ask me beforehand hey do you want to get ziplined off in front of hundreds of people they're like no nah, you're you're doing it so i mean i did obviously accept it i mean it's, you know i was a little nervous it's still very fun so they hooked me up into the zip zip line which was already kind of damp so i was already kind of cold and then they had to wait for the buses to come in because my bus was the very first bus or like one of the very first buses out of at least 10 or 20 and they were all coming in from different locations around the state and surrounding area even up to like New York people were busing in or driving in so I sat here hooked into this zipline thing about six inches from a ledge that just completely drops down and goes straight into a lake and I mean at first I mean I'm the type of person where like at first, if I just rush into something, I'm not going to be nervous at all. But the more I sit there and the more I think about it, the more nervous I get. So I was like, in my head, I was like, oh, I'm fine. This is fine. And yeah, basically, the bus is pulled up. And then there's this guy down there that started frantically waving his hands. And they said, all right, you ready? And they just pushed us off. Down we went. Now, it was actually a really fun thing because you're ziplining. It's a zipline. Ziplines are fun, dude. So I was like flying out over the camp, over the lake. And I eventually glided right in. And honestly, it was not nearly as cold as I thought it was going to be. I scared myself up for nothing. I wasn't, literally, I wasn't scared about the zip line itself. I was just scared about being cold, man. I didn't want to get cold. I didn't want to get my clothes all wet and mushy. I mean, they did get wet and mushy, but it wasn't as cold as I thought. And now, the, the organization that ran it is known for, like, not babying the students or the campers, whatever you want to call them. Like, they didn't, like, mess around. They didn't do any, like tiny like not no risk activities they were doing like they were doing physical activities you know oh my gosh did he just fall he just fell so the first night after we had eaten dinner and everything and we were um i didn't really expect much because it was already like seven or eight and the sun was down i didn't think we'd be doing anything else like organized i thought we'd just have free time they call us over to the gym which i mean it's cool maybe we'll play some basketball maybe we'll do like a cool tournament thing they set us up into like six groups based on your cabins or something like that and um, we started playing dodgeball as we waited and one by one the groups were sent out into the night and we didn't really have much explanation of what was going on and my group was like second to last so I was really confused because there was like it went from a whole like gym full of hundreds of people to like 20 and oh my gosh why okay after all that they finally sent us out and we went to this small little tent type thing and they said listen we gotta do an obstacle course it's obstacle course time. Let's go. And it was like, it wasn't, they weren't messing around when they said obstacle course. This thing was pretty physical. Um, it was, you start off by like getting in this tarp that had tiny pieces of mulch all over it. I'm pretty sure that was unintentional, but you had like roll across it over a river. 
and it, it kind of hurt, but it was it's just so fun. And then the the probably the most physically challenging part of the whole thing was this really steep raw just all dirt there's no grass it was just a hill with a big rope in the middle that you had to like pull up and you as your group had to go up the hill and it was so tiring it's it was steep enough that i don't even know if you could even run up it and it was like probably i'd say at least 50 feet tall so you got to the top your clothes were all muddy and then next thing you know you have to go down a water slide that they made into a pool of water so you want to you take a wild guess on uh, what happens when you have dirt and you have water. So I slid down it and it's really dark and we couldn't really tell what was going on. So we thought it would just be like a six inch, maybe a foot deep pool of water at the bottom. Just like so you wouldn't land right on your butt and hurt yourself. But no, we were completely wrong. It was at least three or four feet deep. So we went out of this water slot and had no choice but to be like completely almost submerged in in hose water so yeah our clothes were ruined and we continued on um i'm just gonna kind of brush over the rest of it because those were the most exciting parts but yeah you like had to climb up this wall that was probably i'd say eight feet tall um you had to go through a bunch of rope climb through these tubes tons of stuff it was really fun a really fun obstacle course and again that that first day set uh, such a huge first impression to me and i was really looking forward to the rest of the rest of the camp now, unfortunately, um, I don't really have time to brush over all seven days, like, in much detail as I did the first one. But basically, um, every day, every night after dinner, there's always some completely unique, different thing that we did. And it, and there's always, like, a theme to the day. Like, the first day was obviously, like, military, obstacle course, etc. Um, the second day, I think was... Uh, I don't know, but there was, there was like, a, a, a square dance, like, uh, country fair type theme. There was a... 80s theme day there was tons of stuff um and i was really enjoying it and really enjoying the time off and the whole time this is one of our cabin mates every time every meal you could request like anything they had and they'll bring it out to you and every time he asked for chocolate milk so they brought out a gallon of chocolate milk every meal and he probably drank six gallons of chocolate milk in like three days that man was a beast and then eventually uh after i think like midway maybe towards getting closer to the end of the week, he started to feel a little sick. Now, we don't know if it was because of the chocolate milk or a virus that was just present at the camp or food poisoning or what, but he got really sick. It went from bad to worse very quickly. He started throwing up all over the place. He was just not in a great place. And eventually he had to be, get sent to the infirmary uh, to get, like, quote, quarantined because they didn't want to get the whole cabin sick, you know? So he was there, he was gone, and then everyone was just kind of trying to like keep their minds off of it and enjoy the rest of their week. And so was I until one night, I think the second to last night, my stomach started to hurt a little bit. And I started getting so paranoid. I started freaking out. I was like, oh my gosh, this dude got me sick. I'm, I'm going to start throwing up all over the place. I'm going to be so, so, so sick. I'm, I'm going to be terrible. And then I went to sleep and I woke up and everything was fine. Uh, the, the day went on as usual. But then, that night, I started to feel sick. Again, my stomach started to hurt. But it didn't feel like it did last time. It didn't feel like just a small inconvenience in my stomach. I could tell that this was going to be bad. It didn't hurt much yet, but you could tell it was going to. Now, I went to sleep, uh, really hoping I could sleep it off again. And, ho like, maybe go to the infirmary tomorrow and figure out something. It didn't, it didn't work like that. I woke up, I don't know when in the night, because there were no clocks and no one had any phones or anything, obviously. So, I woke up sometime, probably fairly early in the night, probably before like 3 or 4 a.m., and I went straight to the bathroom, threw up all over the place, it was projectile, it was shooting out, it was disgusting. Um, but then after throwing up about three times, and I, what I thought was getting everything out of my body, I thought that was it, because... I don't know about you, but sometimes I have these sicknesses where you just have to throw up a couple times, and then you're perfectly fine. I went back to sleep, I felt great, I, felt, I don't say great, I felt fine, and I hope I, I hoped I could sleep it off again. But, yet again, that was not the case. I woke up again, uh, probably about two hours, three hours later, if I were to guess, and I threw up multiple more times. And, I mean, I don't want to say too many things to be gross, but I did other things you when you're sick. Life was not great. Now, at this point, by the time I was finishing all that up, the sun started to come up, and I knew this was going to be a long-term issue. I, I knew I wouldn't be able to just sleep this one off. I could tell that this was going to be a long-term sickness. So that 
that day, um, I just sat around my bed for hours as everyone in the cabin slowly woke up, went out to breakfast, and so on. And I went out to just to see if I could possibly get something to eat because if you're really sick and you don't eat anything, it can be bad for you. So I wanted to at least drink or eat something. So I went off to the uh, dining hall area and the second I opened the door and the scent of breakfast came up on me, I instantly had to close the door and sit down. It was, I could not, I could not have been in there. And I realized I'm really going to have to go to the infirmary soon. I, oh, this is, this is not, this is, again, this is not something small, you know? So, unfortunately, my cabin and the infirmary were on complete opposite sides of, the, like, the campus of the camp. It was probably half mile away almost i uh, it was it was a far distance and for me being sick and every step felt like i was gonna throw up and have to use the bathroom in not good ways it was not good for me and because the other sick camper i talked about earlier he was carted off he was like in a golf cart so he just sit there and just hold on tight but i had to go over i brought a friend with me and we had to walk just like beeline it but also at the same time be careful across the entire place. One of the worst parts of the story, I don't even know if I want to uh, go in detail about this. Basically, we went there, we went to the infirmary, and we noticed it it didn't open for, for like 15 or 30 more minutes. So I was sitting there feeling terrible, half a mile away from any beds or anything that I could access because my cabin was so far away, and it was closed. It was, uh, and I, at this point, I really had to use the bathroom. Uh, so what I had to do is I literally like snuck into the pool bathroom because the pool was not yet open. I opened up the gate, snuck in, and I just like, you can you can guess what happened. Um, eventually the infirmary did obviously open, and I was like one of the first people in there because there are other people waiting too. But yeah, I just I took some medicine. I started drinking just a, a decent amount of water, not a bunch because I would probably start throwing up. But just I took little sips now and then, and I stayed in there for a while. Um, I, I saw my other, my friend, he was in the other bed, there, they had two beds there that were, like, for any really, really sick people, and we could, we could tell by the symptoms that we had a similar, if not the same disease, and now some of the, uh, executives at the camp were starting to get really worried that there was gonna be a breakout of this, like, terrible throw-up, like, really bad, like, virus. But luckily, after spending a while in there, they called up my mom. My mom came to pick up both me and, um, my friend, since we did live in the same city and everything. Um, it was like a 45-minute trip home, and I was really worried that I would, like, start really feeling sick again and have nothing to do. But since I had already slept in the infirmary, um, I was starting to feel better, and he was already starting to feel better too. So the ride home was smooth. We dropped him off, dropped me off. I was home, and I slept. Um, I did start brushing off a little bit of the details at the end, and I did like, couldn't go into detail as much as I could have, but um, hopefully you enjoyed this story. I've never really done a full, full-on commentary thing before. No, no, no! Oh well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to my channel, as it does really help me out. I'm really close to YouTube rank. But yeah, that was this was really fun to record. Uh, I hope you guys have a great day. Hope you really enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. They want a story, I'ma tell them that. They wanna see I got the visions, want the change, I'll make the difference, and you know that I'll be searching till I bring it back. Yeah, I went through hell and back to find myself, but I am not the same as who I left. No, I am not the same. I'm reinvented from the head toe. Still I'm on that same mold. Still I'm grinding just to reach the payroll.